Hi YouTube, this is Tyler with Ron Reviews. Now I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today. I will be actually reviewing a game console. I will be reviewing the PS Vita. Now I decided to get the Vita over the 3DS because, uh, to be honest, I believe there's a little bit more potential with this. But let's see if it's right for you. First off, um, I kind of did this as an act of, um, because I've lost some weight, I kind of wanted to get reward myself with something different. So I decided to up it as opposed to just paying 150. Now, I because I had store credit because of you know phenomenal titles such as uh, Dead Island and Atlas Madness Returns, of course. I had plenty of store credit to um, pay halfway for the system. I decided to get the Wi-Fi version, um, which uh, there's no real difference uh, physically or superficially, I guess. Um, compared to the one with the 3G. So, um, yeah, it runs about 250 by itself. You can get a combo pack, I believe, that comes with a 3G, which, um, is 400, uh, like 350 bucks. But, um, yeah, so let's overlook at this. Um, like I said, it's a sleek looking, um, new looking, uh, piece, but is it right for you? Now, as you can see, the interface is really nice. You have nice analog sticks, which I, which when you get the hang of it, is really nice. You have these buttons that click, and you can hear them, and uh, it's much better than the PSP compared to control and mechanisms and everything. So, um, it's thin, but it's not as thin as everybody probably would have hoped it would have been. And on the top, you have the where you put the cartridges and all that information which I'll tell you in about there's two cameras there's one on this side right here if you can see that little dot right there is the camera and this one which I'll show you that why these have cameras is not probably the best quality um, the only thing that I can really say that is a true game changer is the beautiful 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 design and the beautiful screen itself. And I'll show you right now uh, how the screen differs. Of course you have to do the, the touch screen thing because that's the new modern thing. And you can look at the interface right now. Uh, the interface in itself I don't like that much. I believe it's a little, it's trying to take from uh, some of the smartphones. And while that is alright, it's kind of gimmicky and uh, it doesn't look as pretty as if I could personally design it as much as I would like to. Um, on the back, there's a new feature from PlayStation to continue their touch thing. Um, you have this back interactivity thing, which for certain games you can use, which I haven't found any games to use it, and frankly, I don't care. I, I kind of enjoy just playing with the, the sticks and the buttons as opposed to touch screen. But um yeah, uh, for like a basic um for a basic plane it runs about 6 hours. But um you know, if you get into a game that has really high graphic content, it can run about maybe 5 hours at the at best. So, it does take a little bit of um battery, but it recharges fairly fast. So let's look at the photo, uh, how the camera works. Clicking on the touch screen, you are able to access the camera, which doesn't give you much options. There's no actual effects, and it's just a pretty much basic camera. They also have a video camera option, which in the long run doesn't look any better as well. So in terms of HD camera, this is not really top notch. It's not even 720, I believe. But it is a fairly nice feature in case you do need to take pictures on the go. But it's no way better than your smartphone. Instead of using the UMD from PSP, which thank god they've gotten rid of, they have decided to go with a more flash memory card oriented type. And while this is fine, it is very small and it could be easily lost. So I would suggest keeping them in the boxes as much as possible. Or, better yet, at least get an accessory to put them in uh, when you're on the go. Another problem is, while I love the box design, seriously, Sony, once you enter it, there's nothing in there. 
put some more shit in the box. Another brilliant concept is the Nier application, which in the long run, when Sony starts releasing more PSPs and everybody starts actually getting these, this will come in handy when you can find local players to challenge them at any game. Much like their big brother console counterpart, they do have a nice PS market, which right now is very thin because of the basic opening titles. There's not much out there, but they are converting a lot of games that are going to soon be coming out, especially from classic PS1, which I'm very excited about. Games such as Final Fantasy and RC can actually be downloaded. That RC right now is offering the game for free as opposed to $10 on the PS3. While it might not be as big as the PS3 counterpart, it is fun to know that you can actually download that for free. And downloads are actually a breeze, especially if you're in a good Wi-Fi area. So even if you're downloading the gig, you'll soon be having it done within the next 15 minutes. So it's no big deal. For such fast downloads, the browser is a little bit of a kick in the balls. The browser it tends to go about as slow as the PS3 browser. Which, if you're not really surfing the internet, it's not really the point of the, the console itself. But it would be a nice little function if it could actually load a little bit better. So, uh, it's a little, it's, it, it's not that great. Another big issue, in my opinion, is the memory card system. Now, when you get the opportunity, I would suggest getting the 8 gig as opposed to a 4 or a 16 gig or higher. The reason being is that while you can download a couple games on it it's not really that big of a it's not big of a necessity unless you're really planning to download everything from from the shop but um they are small they are tiny actually and they are easily they can be easily lost so you want to keep those in a nice place but other than that um they are nice little flash drives and they do hold a lot of information but going over 8 gig in my opinion is a little too unnecessary. The system shines with the out, out amazing graphic quality. I was surprised when I started this handheld. I have never seen something so beautiful on a handheld like this. And the game such as MLB fit perfectly for it. So does Marvel vs. Capcom, which has over 50 characters right now and there's plenty more DLC coming. Especially with the competition out there, the beautiful colors and everything stands out way beyond a PST, PS2 title and might possibly get in the realm of the Wii titles. Which, the Wii is not the best looking console out there, but that's pretty impressive for a handheld compared to the 3DS. Another and the best game I think out there right now is definitely Uncharted. Now they put a lot of effort and a lot of time to this game and hopefully I'll be doing a review on it soon as soon as I beat it of course. A handheld Everything is just, it's its gorgeous. Uh, the controls are a lot smoother, in my opinion. And not to mention the gun target mech, the targeting style is definitely better, in my opinion, than PS3. Which is hard to do, especially on a title on, on a portable gaming system. Let alone using the controls that you have. So, I've been thoroughly impressed by these three titles. And I'm looking forward to whatever Sony throws out later and the possibility of third party titles out there is endless and this is why I believe this is going to be the best gaming system uh, portable at least for a long time. I guess what the question you need to ask yourself is what kind of video game console are you looking for? If you're looking for more of a casual market I would suggest getting the 3DS however if you have problems with the 3D causing dizziness and stuff, I would suggest maybe possibly looking in the PS Vita, but if you are a definite hardcore gamer, and by hardcore I mean that you want to play certain games that the 3DS cannot support. Um, 3DS is awesome for games such as Legend of Zelda and stuff like that, classic games, but those are reeditions of games, games that you probably have on Nintendo 64 and um, GameCube. However, if you are looking for maybe a possible, it's a, it's a leap of faith, but from these three games that I've played, I can tell you that this is a good console, and the way that uh, the sales are going on with the PS Vita, uh, in America at least, um, promises that there's going to be 
um, more games that are going to be coming out. And they're going to be more traditionally action and um, hardcore game oriented. So if you are a great, if you're a gamer that is interested in maybe taking your game on the road, especially if there's PS3 connectivity, um, go all for it. I would definitely suggest getting this. It is a leap of faith, like I said. It's going. To, it's two hundred and fifty dollars that you dish out, plus um, forty, thirty, and forty. I mean that that's a lot of money plus the memory card, which I would suggest getting the eight gig. Like I said, um, the eight gig is thirty dollars at most places, and it's it's it fills up pretty well, in my opinion. I believe that um, the memory card. It, the memory card will will last you if you just get eight, as opposed to getting like a 32 or something like that. So with that said, I would definitely suggest getting the PS Vita. Um, there's a lot of titles that have been announced. There are possible titles like the PS1 Classics that are coming out, and I'm stoked for it. So um, if you have enough time to play on 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 the go, I would definitely suggest this. And if you're looking for a challenge, but with decent controls, I believe the PS Vita is the way to go. Um, I'm not too crazy about the touch features. I'm not too crazy about some of the prices. But um, it's promised that it'll eventually go down. That's just how the market works. And if you decide to wait for a little bit, good. You'll have plenty more titles that will be out by then. At and with um, games such as Silent Hill coming out at the end of the month and Little Big Planet, I'm pretty sure there'll be more people that are more interested in the Vita by the end of the month. So, with that in mind, I will give the Vita an 8 out of 10 simply because of uh, some of the sizes and some of the, uh, you know, some of the interface problems. But other than that, um, the game, the gaming system, it is a good gaming system. I like it more than the 3DS. My sister has a 3DS, and um, when I told her Final Fantasy X was coming out um, on PS Vita, she was a tad jealous. So um, I would definitely look into the PS Vita. Um, it is a it is a gamble, but like I said, it's probably worth it. And the games that are promised right now, and the games that are going to be promised at the end of the week. Because they're quote unquote starting this gaming heaven thing, I am pretty excited to see what they're going to be releasing by the end of the by the end of the year. So, um, yeah, keep an open look, and I guess we'll see you next uh, next time. I will be reviewing uh, Lion Ryan. I was supposed to review it this week. I'm sorry. I decided that since I got this console, I might as well review it because I wanted to um, let everybody know about this. And um, I will be also overviewing the Bee Fest that I will be having on Friday. What the fuck? No! Fuck no! Flame Ryan, I have to wait. What the fuck is this? It's broken. Oh, God, this looks bad. In the fabric of high fashion. Trust worths then.